Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today, we are on episode number 87. As always, I am Shane Thomas, and you can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Also hop over to codekarate.com, check out the other Daily Dose of Drupal videos, sign up for the newsletter, you can also follow me on Google+. Today, we're going over a pretty cool, simple little module called the Fences module. And this module solves a problem and there there are some of you out there who are very who who this will you'll definitely appreciate this module I, I'll say that basically it allows you to simplify some of the markup that Drupal outputs so a lot of times in Drupal because Drupal aims to be as flexible as possible and to fit as many purposes as possible it includes a lot of extra markup so as you can see Here's the Drupal 7's default markup for a field. You can see there's a lot of divs there, a lot of nested divs, just to make sure that it can fit pretty much any scenario you would need. 90% of the time, that's not necess necessary on most sites. So what the Fences module allows you to do is it allows you to simplify that markup. So here's the Fences default markup. And as you can see, it's much simpler. So we're going to go ahead and just demo this quickly and show you how it can be used. So let's go ahead and open the site up. And I have a pretty simple test site here. I just created a simple content type with a couple fields. And we'll go ahead and open up our developer tools and take a look at this one here. So as you can see, here is the field. This wraps the entire field. Here is the label. And this is a, was a select field. I called it test select. You can see there's then a list or a div that says it's a class of field items, and there's an items list that says one. So all that markup just to get this little output right here. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to turn on the fences module, which I've already downloaded, and save this. And now that I saved this module, I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to open this up in a new tab so we can compare. And we'll see if anything's changed yet. I haven't done any configuration. So it looks just about the same. Let's go ahead and configure this module now. Okay, so you can go ahead and look at the options that they have here. it generally says if it's a new site you should go ahead and select override on both of these so now that we click save we're going to come into our content type that I created and I'm going to go into manage fields I'm gonna go into this test select now as you can see when I'm in this field there's a wrapper markup selection and there's a big list of all these different templates that you can use for outputting your fields. So the generic container is just the div, but if we wanted this to be, for instance, a bold, we can go ahead and select bold. We'll save this. We'll refresh here. You can see now it says bold, or it is bold, still says the same thing. You can see the label is much different. It's much simpler HTML wise in comparison. So it adds the label as an H3 and adds bold around the actual value. So you can see how much simpler it is markup wise. There's no div wrapping everything. It's just much simpler. So you can then of course use your CSS in your style or your style sheets to go ahead and theme this however you want. We'll go ahead and try a couple other ones here. We'll go into the test text and select a different one. You could use a paragraph format. Which that's we'll go ahead and try paragraph format. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of options, and I'll show you how you can change these options or add to this list as well here in a second. So I'll come back and refresh this. Now you can see this is wrapped in a paragraph tag so the label is an h3 this is wrapped in a paragraph tag 
and it's pretty much as simple as it gets. You can go ahead in any field, then you can of course configure it however you want, making it extremely easy to change the markup for this specific field. And that of course keeps things simpler. Simpler means you know the page is going to load a little bit faster because you don't have as much markup. Your CSS is going to be applied a little faster, doesn't have as much markup to parse through. Just overall, if you can use less markup, there's no reason not to do it. It just makes things a little bit better. So how can we modify this? Let's say we wanted to modify this template for this paragraph tag. Well, we can hop into the module and it comes with a whole bunch of templates. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And as you can see, I'm in this defenses module here. It has a bunch of files, but there's a folder called templates. And inside this, there's all of these different templates that you can use. So for instance, we can go ahead and open up this paragraph template that was in here. And you can see here is the the template for this paragraph. If I wanted to change this template across my entire site, all I need to do is make a copy of this template, bring it into my theme, and put it either in my top level of my theme directory or a themes templates directory, save it, I can then modify this, and then all I need to do to get it to take effect is of course clear the cache in Drupal. So it's really pretty easy. You can also see, if you know a little bit of PHP, it says if the element is inline, use a span. If it's not, if it's above, use an H3. So that, of course, means that if we want this label to be inline, instead of, to, in, or instead of making it an H3, we can go ahead and come up to our content type and go to Manage Display and change the label of these to inline. We save this, come back, and you'll notice now that they are inline. You're going to have to, of course, do add a little CSS to make this look the way you want it to. It's not going to maybe be as nice initially right out of the box, but it does cut down on the markup and allows you to control how the end output looks and doesn't leave it all up to the structure of the HTML itself. So that's pretty much it for the fences module. One last thing I'll cover before I quit is if you go down to the bottom, it allows you or tells you how you can define your own your own templates. So let's say you want to add your own template to this template list. So you wanted to add a template here. You basically need to follow this format down here. You build a template, you place the template file in your theme, and you use this naming convention. Use field dash dash fences dash name of element. You can also use field dash dash fences dash name of element dash multiple. And that's just because some elements need to look differently if they have multiple values. So if your field has you know, two or three values, maybe it's you can select multiple checkboxes or something for your field, you're going to want that to probably have a little bit of extra markup around it than just a single selection. So you can go ahead and try to add your own elements, and once you add this, clear the cache, they should show up in that list. So that's all we're going to go over today. As always, you can let me know if you have any questions, or follow me on Twitter if you're not already, and try this module out and see if it helps you cut down on all that extra markup. Thanks for watching the Daily Dose of Drupal. We'll be back next time.